Okay, hi. So you'll probably remember that we spoke about two different systems for responding to our environment. Now the first one we have covered in brief detail, which is the nervous system. So today I'm going to cover a specific example of the endocrine system. Now the endocrine system involves the release of hormones. So hormones. And these hormones are secreted by glands. So glands will secrete hormones and the hormones will travel around the body in the blood. So rather than traveling through neurons, like in the nervous system, the hormones will travel in the blood, which means that they actually act a fair amount slower than the nervous system will. So the endocrine system is slower than the nervous system. However, the effects of hormones will be, will be felt usually for a lot longer than the effects of something from the nervous system. For example, if you touch a hot saucepan and you pull your finger back, you can feel the pain, as long as you don't get burnt that is, you can feel the pain for a matter of seconds. However, the endocrine system may work over minutes, hours, maybe even days and weeks. And the example we're going to look at is exactly that. And that is the menstrual cycle, which of course is the reproductive system in females. Okay, so the menstrual cycle is the mechanism in which a female can prepare the body for fertilization of an egg. Now eggs are produced here, so these two things are the same. You've got two of them, which are ovaries. So ovaries. This and of course this one as well. So let's say this purple thing here is the egg. Obviously eggs aren't purple, but this egg will mature in the ovaries um, until around about 14 days when it's done maturing. After 14 days, the egg is released, so released down the fallopian tube, these are known as the fallopian tubes, and it travels down and down and down and down until it reaches the womb or the uterus. So this here is the uterus, and this here is the fallopian tube. Now before this has been released after around 14 days, the lining, let's move down a little bit, the lining of the uterus or the womb has been thickening because we need a thick, nice womb there to protect the egg. And so this is thickened um, before the 14 days. So from around about five days up until your 14 days, this womb is thickening and thickening and thickening. And then of course it's ready for the egg to come and take its place. Now the egg will remain here for a while, um, but after a while, if the egg has not been fertilized, then the egg is flushed out this way, and so is the thickened womb lining, because we don't need that thick lining if it's not needed to protect the egg. And so the womb lining and the egg are both flushed out, and that is known as the monthly bleed, or of course the period. Now this process is completely controlled by the endocrine cycle, because there are three key hormones that you need to know. The first one is FSH, FSH. Now it's fine for you to just remember it as FSH, but it stands for follicle stimulating hormone. And FSH is produced in the pituitary gland, pituitary gland, okay? Now the pituitary gland is in the brain. It's not anywhere in the ovaries or the uterus or anything like that. The pituitary gland is actually in the brain. Okay, next we have estrogen. Estrogen. And estrogen is produced and secreted by the ovaries. So estrogen is another hormone, but rather than being produced in the brain, it's produced in the ovaries. Now and lastly, we have LH. You're fine just remembering it as LH, but it actually stands for luteinizing hormone. And LH is also produced in the pituitary gland. So if you want to remember those, then the ones which are um, shortened, the ones with abbreviations, FSH and LH, they are both produced in the brain. So abbreviations, brain, and estrogen is produced in the ovaries. Okay, so what actually happens during the cycle? Well, let's say from day one or day zero, we start producing FSH. So FSH levels rise. 
Now, FSH as a hormone, the role of FSH is to cause the eggs to mature. So in the ovaries, let's just have a look up here. In the ovaries, you have eggs at the start of every cycle which are not matured and they're not ready to be uh, fertilized, of course. FSH causes them to mature and allows them to be fertilized eventually, of course. So FSH, that is the job of FSH, but FSH will also cause estrogen to be produced. So FSH causes estrogen to be produced. Now, remember we needed to thicken the womb lining and we needed to do that before the 14 days when we get the egg released. Well, that is what estrogen does. So FSH from day one allows estrogen to be produced. After a little while, estrogen is present in the blood and it will cause the womb lining to thicken. Now, importantly here, estrogen also inhibits the production of FSH. Now, that sounds a bit weird because FSH makes estrogen be produced and then estrogen stops FSH being produced. Reason being is that we only want to mature one egg every cycle. And so if we allowed FSH to stay in the blood and be there all the time, then we would get loads and loads and loads of eggs constantly being uh, matured. And that is not what we want. So estrogen will cause FSH to go down. Estrogen will also cause LH to increase. And now after a while, when we have enough LH in the blood, the job of LH is to allow the egg to be released. So after around about 14 days, the estrogen has allowed there to be enough LH in the blood that the egg is released. And that process is known as ovulation. So egg release approximately 14 days into the cycle is known as ovulation. Ovulation is the egg being released from the ovaries. It will travel down here, down here, and eventually it'll end up in the womb. And so this occurs just to get the egg ready to be fertilized by a sperm. If the egg is fertilized by a sperm, then of course a pregnancy will occur and the womb lining is gonna stay as it is and get even thicker um, and allow the embryo to, to grow and mature. If, however, the egg is not fertilized after a while, and we're gonna say around about 28, 26 to 28 days, then the womb lining and the egg, which has not been matured, will be flushed out. So they'll be flushed out, and that is known as the period or the monthly bleed. And once this happens, the estrogen and LH levels in the blood have gone down, and that allows FSH to go back up and the cycle will start again. Because if estrogen is causing FSH to not be produced, if we take away the estrogen, then FSH can be produced. Then we'll produce FSH again and the cycle will repeat itself. Okay, so a fairly complex cycle there, but if you take it step by step and realize what each hormone does, then it actually becomes quite simple. Uh, you do need to know that the womb lining will get thicker from around about day five, but you don't you don't need to know um, exactly what is occurring with the womb lining when it will when it will be released. You just need to know the general theory. So if you do have any questions on that, please do write a comment in the box below or send me an email using the link. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.